the greatest challenge is looking into her face, looking into her eyes and seeing blankness. the workforce three years ago in 2017 July I had actually engaged domestic helpers to assist me with my mom so that I could go to work but she did not cooperate or accept uh, the domestic workers that were engaged so I went from one helper to a second helper and then to a third helper I was seeing how it had put a strain on my mom she started feeling insecure when I'm not around and high suspicion uh, on the helper as being an intruder. So I had to give up my job, take care of my mom on a full-time basis. She was diagnosed with uh, Alzheimer's dementia in uh, late 2016, 2017. And since then, her condition has declined quite a fair bit. She's slowly degenerating into a uh, moderate to slightly severe stage at this point in time. Many occasions where she does not recognize me or she forgets who I am. She'll just look at me blankly like, who are you? <laughs> Why are you in my space? Those times are hard because when I try to care for her or when I try to feed her or when I try to give her medication, she won't cooperate. She's always been a very sociable person, so she needs to be surrounded by warmth, love, people who care and give her attention. And right now, that's not happening because it's just me. <laughs> I believe, as in most of us, we get bored with seeing the same person 20 hours, 4 hours a day, 7 days a week, 4 or 5 weeks a month, <laughs> on and on and on. And I've not been able to engage my mom like we usually do with the family members, time out together. That is a great difference. Usually, my brother will come over, or the grandkids will come over, and uh, I've been able to take breeders. I'm not able to now because of the restrictions. Pre-COVID, I could engage resources like from uh, Alzheimer Disease Association, Lions Befriender. They could come and they could help me engage with my mom in uh, simple exercises or even helping to bath and clean her. But with COVID, all that was ceased. I had to take up all those responsibilities and doubling up when it was already quite difficult to even push forward under the circumstances. It's like taking care of a young child. What we perceive as something that's nonsense, not practical, unrealistic, is very real in their mind. I've toned down on wanting to have the last say. I learned that it's not important to, to win the argument, but it's important to always love, to always be patient, because they need to know you care. Also, I've learned in a C2C courses that I need to change the way I look at my mother. The dementia, the illness does not define her as a person, because all my 50 over years, she's always been loving, caring, doting mother. That's all I remember. That's all I want to remember. That's how I remind myself when I look at my mom, how she behaves and the negativeness and the, the, the words that are thrown out is not her. Last thing is self-care. Is you taking care of yourself so you can be a better caregiver overall mentally, physically, emotionally, psychologically strong. I'm telling myself repeatedly, self-care, Alison, self-care. How I take care of myself is I read, I listen to inspirational songs, I worship, I sing, 
The other thing is that I cook. I'm now into baking, cookies, pastries, and all that. I can't really go out because of my mom's high dependence. I put time aside to just chill and do the things I need to do and I, I like to do. I was lost. Never in my mind did I expect that I would be a caregiver to my mom. So I sought help because um, I didn't know how to deal with the uh, changes that I was witnessing. I love my mom and I want to be able to help her in any way I can and I can't do that on my own. Seek help. Don't isolate yourself because the only direction is downhill when you isolate yourself. Sometimes they don't know what you're going through. You, you have to speak it out. Don't be ashamed. Don't be worried. What is more important is the person you love that you are caregiver to. They need you and you have to put aside all your other predispositions. You have to put that aside and you have to learn to put them first because they need you and they're not in the right condition of mind to take care of themselves. Dementia is uh, going to be increasingly evident and it's not just subjected to the elderly folks. Instead of being passive to just receiving this as information, we can actually equip ourselves and read up, go to the net, go to YouTube, go to Google, don't be so quick to offer counsel, but be a listening ear. We can't give out to others what we don't have in ourselves. So if we don't have peace, we don't have joy, if we don't have hope, we can't offer that because we can't give to others what we ourselves are not experiencing. And if the community can understand this, United we stand, divided we fall. So if everyone can embark on this journey, then there's more of us that we can offer and give out with others.